Okay, friends and neighbors, do not adjust your television. We are sideways. This is a PV Valve King, and it works on the main channel, on the clean channel, but if I hit the channel select, I hear the reverb kick in. Let's see, the channel select is right here. The volume goes down. Now I have this volume like crazy loud. And even with like the volume levels at please hurt me levels. Uh, we're not getting much out of the lead overdrive channel. So that's our problem. We gotta solve it. Okay, so I did a little bit of reconnaissance on this. I found the schematic, no problem. Thank you, Internet. Um, for the clean channel, the sound comes in, goes through the... Um, first part of valve one there, just first half of valve one, and then uh, tone stack, and then back to valve three. There's a 12x7 back there, and to the power tubes. Pretty straightforward, right? So we, we already know, we get sound out of the clean channel, so we know that that board back there is probably working fine, and our problem is here, and then loop over this way. So. If we're on the drive channel, the audio signal should be making it via through this relay to pin 7 of this tube, and then it continues to travel down to this tube. So since this is all kind of in the preamp, I think we might be able to sniff this little monkey out with, uh, without having to plug the power tubes in and all of that stuff. But, strange question, why is this capacitor flat? That's the weirdest looking capacitor I have ever seen in my life. I mean, it looks like a regular roundy, but somebody squished it. Are there any other ones like that on here? That's so weird. Okay, kids. Who wants to smack the engineer? Okay. Um first thing I discovered is I figured, well, I will just fire this up because reading the schematic, the clean channel goes through the first half of valve one, this side, and then goes back here to valve three and the power tubes. So that wasn't broken. Why bother? So I started with the second half of valve two, which was getting signal when you switch to the drive channel. And then you get still goes to valve two, and this side was getting signal, and this was getting signal. But yet, when the signal was supposed to be coming out of pin six, which is the anode, it goes through this resistor to get its B plus. Uh, and uh, this resistor, perchance, is to be open. So the second half of this tube is non operational. That's a piddly little quarter watt resistor to run a tube. Why didn't we just use one watts like we do on all the other tube projects we do? I don't know. Uh, special thanks to our friend Glass Monster for helping me make sense of this schematic, which was uh, challenging me, especially with my workshop being in a bit of disarray. I'm just trying to get through these, and uh, he does enjoy sort of uh, doing this, so we sort of tag team it. He reads the schematic, asks a handful of questions, and I can test and solve it, and it just makes things go a lot faster. Uh, yes, I probably would have found this eventually, but yeah. What's interesting is how many parts in here are labeled Ruby. Those BS tube sockets are labeled Ruby. I hate those type of tube sockets. And the power tubes were Ruby, which allegedly somebody put new power tubes in it. I don't think so, but the original ones aren't bad. Uh, yeah, nah, who knows. The point of this is it's from the music store and the guy is just intending to sell it, so he needed it to work. Okay, kids, so there's our replacement resistor. Yes, you have to take all of the nuts off the front panel, and you have to take all of these screws off, and you have to unplug the reverb, and you have to tip. It's a pain in the butt, so no soldering action here. I'm going to give it a quick test. If it passes, then we'll just call it good. Okay, so I brought the guitar out. It's probably not in perfect tune. 
I just need to prove that this works. I'm very, I'm very backed up on repairs, so this video was not an in-depth look at this thing. Um, let the guitar tune itself. Okay, so... So that's at like, you know, 2 of 10 into one little crappy 12-inch speaker. So that's a clean channel, and here's the distort channel or the drive channel that didn't work. And we got the gain up just a little bit. And the reverb works too. I didn't know if that did. It does. Yeah, the thing that didn't work now works, and it was one lousy resistor that they should have used at least a half a watt resistor, if not a one watt. I use one watts throughout all my tube circuits just because, why not? The cost isn't that much, but I suppose if you're making a couple zillion of them and you're trying to be cheap and take your company out of Meridian, Mississippi and move it to China. <clears throat> I like old PV gear. I like old PV gear. Anyway, Val King is fixed for the customer. It's going to go back to the music shop, and I will have to jump on the next project. I was enjoying listening to the 300B, and I know if anybody heard my, too much of my music, I'd get copyright strike and all of that kind of crap. But uh, the 300B amp is working great, and that chewed up a few days, so now i got to catch up.